All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Fat Phil. And today, I want to cover all the news in Galaxy of Heroes and talk about a great opportunity for you to donate to a charity that Capital Games is hosting and they're giving out f resources. Now, I don't want to say free resources because you do have to donate, but you donate money and they're going to be giving you a pack in Galaxy of Heroes as part of that donation, which I think is a really great, really great thing for the Extra Life event. So I do want to talk about that. But first and foremost, Let's thank my channel members so much for their continued support. If you're interested, link down below. Otherwise, guys, I just ask that you like this video, subscribe, comment, and if you want to, join the Discord. Uh, it, the Discord is a great place that you can get a lot of good information. I'm chiming in pretty frequently on there because it's not a huge Discord server, so I get to interact with a lot of the guys in there. But let's go into the game, and then I'm actually just going to go straight over here, and I want to talk about the kit reveal for Moff Gideon Dark Trooper. One thing to note right away, there's no Mandalorian tag. However, they do say that he is, there is some Mandalorian synergy built into his kit. That for Grand Arena, you could use him with the Maul Mandalorian team as long as they're all dark side, which is super cool. I really like that, that they're trying to create new teams with existing ones because they don't want to take away those Imperial Remnants from Aiden Versio and her Omicron. So obviously this means that Beskar Gideon is going to be a Territory War character, which is fine, but definitely not my favorite thing. Couple things I wanted to at least just note in, in this kit here is um, right in here, he can revive his Imperial Remnant allies if he's the leadership, or he's going to revive Dark Side Mandalorian allies and they're going to gain health and protection retribution. The next thing that I want to note here is if the allied leader is dark side mandalorian he gains all these stats and at the end of their turn dark side mandalorian allies recover 20 percent protection basically kind of taking the place of the bo katan kree's unique ability which is great right adding some extra survivability to that team because it's only dark side mandalorians now then his leadership ability just calls out that it's non-droid Imperial Remnants, and if all allies were Imperial Remnant at the start of battle. So, Dark Trooper not going with this version of Moff Gideon, which is amazing. That is really good news. We can keep him with the General Veers team. So, I'm not going to cover all of this stuff. Arnold always goes into super, you know, really good depth into this character, into his, you know, the characters. Um, I'm a little disappointed he didn't get the Mandalorian tag. I would have loved to see that. But, overall, with the synergy with Maul Mandalorians, Potentially meaning that we need to find a new home for Lord Vader or find a way to use Lord Vader without Maul if this team really is that good. So Imperial Super Commando is getting a touch up, which is amazing. So the big thing that's getting added here is he's got a 100% counter chance now. Gains 15% offense for each enemy with no buffs. All right, that stays the same, right? More counter chance, same amount of offense. But whenever a dark side Mandalorian attacks out of turn, they deal additional true damage and recover 10% protection. So now, additional protection recovery like Bo-Katan Kreese. Whenever Gar Saxon or Imperial Super Commando attack out of turn, the other attacks as well limit once per turn. So you're basically getting extra attacks out of them all the time. Then they're adding a new unique ability here, where he and Gar Saxon are gaining a bunch of stats, which is awesome. And the first time that either character would be defeated each encounter... They gain damage immunity for one turn, which can't be copied, dispelled, or prevented. Think of this like the Beskar Armor Mando ability, right? When someone drops below, he applies that damage immunity, which you can't get around. These guys are getting the exact same thing. So basically trying to take away between Beskar Armor Gideon and, um, you know, Imperial Super Commando here, removing Bo-Katan and Bam, right, out of that Maul Mandalorian team and kind of inserting some other characters here, which I think... My thought process here would be their Envision team would be Maul, Candorus, Beskar Gideon, Gar Saxon, and Imperial Super Commando because you'd be using Jango Fett with your Admiral Trench team. So I want to call that out. We did get the new feats for Conquest because, uh, you know, Gideon's, uh, Gideon is the Conquest character. I don't know if I actually, like, touched on that, but he is the Conquest character. And I wanted to just say this. I saw a comment down here that kind of rubbed me the wrong way where... They said, Conquest characters, such pay-to-get characters. I could not disagree with this more. I'm not trying to put you on blast. I'm just saying that I could not disagree with that more. Getting them in seven Conquests, 100% some pay-to-play aspect there or extreme endgame account. But getting box six is very easy. 
you, a lot of accounts can get box six pretty consistently with the right strategy. So these feats are definitely in favor of players with the newest, latest, and greatest things. So you need to get 40 battles with Hut Cartel, with Ewoks, including Nisa. The Phoenix one is repeating. 100 enemies with Tusken Warrior. That is just insane to me. Not that it's 100 kills. It's that it's just with Tusken Warrior, which is just... Ugh. Um, and then 20 battles with a full squad of Ewoks, repeating that feat yet again. So... You've got to have the new characters to really get a lot of these things going. Tuscan Warrior's not necessarily new, but the Tuscans are a team that a lot of players probably don't have geared up because, um, you know, you'd they're not something that without Chieftain and Warrior that are really good. So it's definitely something to keep in mind there. Some of these sector feats, I just want to call out like Sector One, like it's definitely they've definitely taken a lot of the skill out of Conquest and replaced it with grindiness. This is my one complaint here, where. Just alone in Sector 1 here. Win 14 battles with one Jawa. Win 14 battles with a squad of Old Republic. That's 28 battles right there. 28 battles that you have to do no matter what. You cannot work on those at the same time. Then it says, you know, Sector 1 mini boss. Win with Seer Junda. Win without Gen any Jedi, Sith, or Unaligned Force user. Now you're at 30 battles. Sector 1 boss. Win with Ben Solo surviving. Win without Jedi, Sith, or Unaligned Force user. There's 32 battles alone in Sector 1 that you have to do. You have to do that, right? And those 32 battles are basically all on top of, you know, this, right? Like, so it just, yeah, I don't know. I just don't, you could maybe try and cheese it with Jawa and some of these teams, but yeah, you, you got to do a crazy amount of battles. And I'm not a big fan of that. I, I'm not, not a fan of that whatsoever. I think it's a bit, asking a bit much there. Um, and that kind of repeats throughout a lot of these different things. They're definitely trying to make sure that all the new characters are getting included in these feats. You got like your Zoris and Scout Troopers, Tarful, Saw Gerrera. You got Nisa stuff, right? And then if you move into Sector 5, of course, we've got to have Galactic Legend Leia surviving. And then, oh yeah, do it without a Galactic Legend. So definitely a lot of stuff here that I feel they're just trying to make sure that, hey, this character, unless you have the newest, latest, and greatest things, you know, Box six is the goal. And that's fine. As a free to play, box six is more than enough for you. Just say it like that. We are not entitled to a brand new seven star character right away. Waiting a little bit longer, getting box six, I think that's perfectly acceptable. We did get Datacron set. Um, the relic requirements have dropped to one, three, and five. I'm a huge fan of this. I think this is long overdue. Really, really love that they're going to this length of things. The stats. Max protection, max health, defense, health, steal, accuracy, critical damage. I think that's a repeat of the last set we just are losing here. With the difference being what the alignments and um, characters are. And that the level 3s are changing away from that beefy, um, you know, 15% max health and protection to some other things here. Which is great. My one thing here again, unaligned force users getting some love, which means Ray with defense, health, and health steal is going to be a bear in Grand Arena. So, want to call that out. And they did show that Galactic Legend Leia Organa, oops, right up here, she is getting a data crime. It's not going to be fun. They've got to make sure that the, you know, the newest characters get their data crons, just like Terran Malikos here as well. So, calling that, you know, just you got to say it how it is sometimes, right? We did get the event calendar if you guys want to check this out. One thing to note, we got 3v3 Grand Arena coming up, which I know we all love so much and, you know, never have problems with 3v3. The final thing I want to cover here, right? And I don't know, my face has been covering stuff, but I don't care. Final thing I want to cover here is Capital Games hosts an extra life, extra give charity event every single year. Every single year. And one of the things that they're doing this year is they have a pack here where if you donate $25 and provide your ally code, you will get this pack in return. Now, for a lot of you, you're going to say, oh, well, that breaks my free-to-play. Yes, it, you know what? Sure, it does, but who cares? This is going to charity, and as a father of a child who has had a lot of health complications, um, donating to something like Extra Life is something that, you know, is really important. Um, you know, my daughter, I don't know, I don't know that I've shared this on the channel before, so if you're still listening, you kind of get a little bit of fat fill here, but, um, you know, the father that, 
my daughter has had a lot of health issues and where she has gotten therapy over the past, you know, almost four, you know, three and a half years, we donate to as much as we can because it's just such an important cost to us. So this is something that 1000% I will be purchasing this pack and providing my ally code because I think it's a great opportunity for people to, uh, you know, get out and donate. And the pack contents are subject to change, right? It does say this is only an estimate, but you look through these things. They're giving out Zimbital cards, impulse detectors, air magnifiers, droid brains, Gerda keypads, I mean, all those relic things, some signal data, and then 10 shards of all the new characters you need for Calcastus and Galactic Legend Lore Organa. So if you have the money, $25 isn't that much to give to charity, and in return, they're going to give you a Galaxy of Heroes pack. I think anybody, even if you're free to play and you're considering, hey, charity is something I'm very passionate about, I think this is a great way to do it. Um, and I'm someone who, I the only time I've spent on this game, I think I've mentioned this, and if I haven't, well, I've mentioned it in the past. I haven't mentioned it for a while because it's just, um, I did spend $20 on a Commander Luke Skywalker pack way back in the day, uh, like 2017. And I stopped considering myself free to play for that time. When I took 578 days off of Galaxy of Heroes, came back, I'm like, yeah, I'm free to play. Like, that $20 is no longer making an impact on my account at this point because I did not play straight through. I took a lot of time off, really set myself back. So, you know, fight me in the comments over that. But this pack, I will 1,000% be buying. I will make sure that I donate to Extra Life because I just think this is a great cause. And to get a little bit of something in Galaxy of Heroes out of it is just an added bonus. So, I, you know, Capital Games, like, hat off, man. You know, this is, this is top-notch stuff here that, you know, trying to incentivize players, hey... You know, we want you to donate to charity, and we, in turn, are willing to donate this pack to you. Um, so, thank you. I really appreciate this opportunity to get people to donate to charity. I think a lot of times it's so hard, it's so difficult for people to donate because you don't really see anything. And it's like, this is a small thing. Right? This is such a small thing. Hey, you know what? We're going to give this pack, and here's 25, you know, 25 bucks of charity. We'll throw in some extra things here. Like, this is a great way to get people to spend towards a cause that you're passionate about. So... Great job, Capital Games. That's the end of the video, guys. We're going to wrap it up. I love all of you. May the force be with you. And if you're interested in buying that pack, I really don't see why that's a big deal. I think it's a really great option. That was kind of the news that I wanted to cover here. Cheers, guys. I'll see you in the next video. You know, that's it. Mad love.